Hi guys, welcome back to Waxing On. It's uh, Jazz Monday, and today we're looking at an album I had forgotten all about. Actually, this week really are a lot of albums I'd forgotten about. Um, trumpet player we've talked about before, and I believe during the episode it could have been the Dizzy Gillespie one where we were uh, looking at an album, Trumpet Summit. Oscar Peterson and three legendary trumpet players, Dizzy Gillespie, Freddie Hubbard, and Clark Terry. Today we're looking at Clark Terry, my first and only Clark Terry album. And I'm not even going to try to tell you what it's called. Take a look. Yeah. I mean, it's a play on his Mumbles tune. And this album I picked up after seeing Clark on TV. Now, like where I live, he really didn't tour up this way. But he had been in Toronto and appeared on a TV show we had back in the 1970s called Everything Goes. Or no, yeah, Everything Goes. I get that confused with Anything Goes, but Everything Goes. This one was hosted by uh, Norm Crosby, a stand-up comedian from the U.S., uh, Catherine McKinnon, and uh, Mike Darrow, TV show host. Catherine McKinnon was a singer, probably best known for her song Farewell to Nova Scotia. It was a variety show, a talk show. And it was airing around the same time as what Carson was, only because of the time change, it was going to be on an hour earlier. So it was on ahead of The Tonight Show, and something happened that, I forget whether it was Canada or U.S., we didn't change the time, or one of them changed it and the other didn't. They ended on opposite each other, so it really never got much of a fair shake. But the musical director was Mo Kaufman. Now, you may remember we talked about Mo quite a while ago because he had a couple of albums on his own where he was doing classical music. I think we looked at the Vivaldi Four Seasons. He was also a sax player for the Boss Brass. And once he got this job, who did he hire? Yeah, it's mainly Boss Brass. I mean, Rob McConnell was there, Guido Basso, Ernie Tchaikovsky. A lot of the Boss Brass guys were in his studio band. But because they were jazz players, he brought a lot of other great people in. Uh, just to give you an idea of some of the list of... Uh, people that performed there. We had Tony Bennett, Rosemary Clooney, Ella Fitzgerald, uh, and Oscar Peterson. Now, not much of a stretch for Oscar Peterson, because Oscar Peterson was living in one of the cities that make up the greater Toronto area. He was living in Mississauga at the time. Also in Mississauga, just as a little aside, Ralph and Ronnie Hawkins. Recently passed away. We're going to talk about his music in a couple of weeks. And here's one that'll blow your mind. Kentucky Fried Chicken's Colonel Harlan Sanders lived in Mississauga. Who knew? Writers for this show? Again, just a who's who of uh, writers. Dan Aykroyd, uh, Earl Pomerantz, Martin Short. I'll just tell you a little bit about these guys. Uh, Aykroyd, I mean, we all know him from Saturday Night Live. But Aykroyd was in Second City, 1973, the Toronto Second City main stage troupe. He'd also written for a show that... Another guy on here, uh, Earl Pomerantz, his brother, Hart Pomerantz, was part of a comedy team, Hart and Lorne. And he and Aykroyd had written for Hart and Lorne, and the Hart and Lorne Terrific Hour was a special they would have a couple times through the year. Now, funny part about this, Dan Aykroyd writing, Hart, Lorne, Lorne Michaels is the Lorne in that, right? See the connection. Also writing on here, uh, for Everything Goes, Martin Short. Well, Martin Short joined the Toronto Second City main stage in uh, 1977 after John Candy left. Next thing you know, Martin Short, he's down on Saturday Night Live. These things are kind of all interconnected, but all starting out in Toronto. Uh, Martin Short was there season 10, I think it was 1984 or 85. Anyways, these people made up this great show. But the point is, let's get back to the, the jazz part. They were bringing in these artists, like say Tony Bennett, Rosemary Clooney, uh, Ella Fitzgerald. Whoever happened to be touring through town, and that's where Clark Terry shows up. Now, this is the first time I'd seen Clark, first time I'd ever heard mumbles, first time I'd seen him play the horn upside down, the flugelhorn. I mean, this blow your mind. I tried to do it. It's I can't even get my head around it to, to do what he's doing. He's funny. He had a lot of, you know, a lot of great things to play, and he was really entertaining. So I went out and bought an album. Next time I was in Toronto, I went to Sam the Record Man's on Young Street. One of the major uh, record outlets at the time. There was a and and then two doors down, Sam the Record Man. And I picked up this Clark Terry album. And not a big event album, but one where he's playing with a small group. Now, I tried to look online to see if I could find it. 
I couldn't find it on the streaming networks. I looked at his discography. I couldn't see a title like this. So maybe that they've got a different title for it, but it's still out there. Now, to put this in uh, context here, at this point, he's left Ellington's band. He's already done the recordings with Bob Brookmeyer, and it says he's currently a mainstay on The Tonight Show. Now, if I remember correctly, we looked at an album way back, uh, Skitch Henderson leading The Tonight Show band when it was in New York. This was long before Doc took over. So I'm thinking that's the era we're looking at, probably early 60s for, for this album. And he's got a pretty good cast of people supporting him. Let's just take a look at the band. We've got Clark on trumpet and flugelhorn, uh, Jerome Richardson on every saxophone, uh, Vinnie Bell guitar, Eric Gale guitar, and Eric Gale showing up on a few of our albums before. I think he might have been on some of the Bob James ones. Uh, Frank Anderson, keyboards. Now, forgive me on this one if I get it wrong. George Duvivier on uh, bass. Paul Crow's percussion. Willie Bobo on conga. And I think I remember Willie Bobo's name from way back uh, on the Cosby variety show after he had a couple of sitcoms he had a variety show and Quincy Jones was leading the band and I believe Willie Bobo was in that at times and Grady Tate who we've talked about a number of times playing drums so I'll give you an idea of some of the tunes here we got uh, obviously mumbles uh, the mumbler strikes again so we're still running that down big spender rum and mumbles shadow of your smile granddad's blues the cat from Cadiz uh, Never, which is again working that mumbles thing into the, the, the mix, and El Blues Latino. Small group outing, a chance to really hear what Clark does. It was a lot of fun, a great album, um, again a lot of working that mumbles routine. Okay, we, I mean the first song, yeah you get it, and I got a couple more that maybe it was a little too much. Well, you have to decide if you get a chance to hear it. Again, I couldn't find it on streaming networks. I looked on YouTube. It may be something other than the title you see here. And again, that title is very awkward. I, I wouldn't want to go in and ask for this album anywhere, right? But those were the days. I mean, people like this got guesting on TV shows. You don't see that kind of thing much anymore. I mean, I have to say even Saturday Night Live isn't featuring the range of people that I used to enjoy checking out on their musical, uh, musical guests. And these variety shows, Tonight Show was an excellent one back then, they featured a lot of these kind of players. When Doc ran the band, when Johnny was there, Johnny was a big jazz fan and made sure these kind of people got their, uh, their air. And again, this, uh, Everything Goes in Toronto, showcasing a lot of great jazz players and probably because musical director Again, was very much part of that, uh, that genre. Okay, today, Clark Terry. Lots of chances to find other albums online. Uh, Streaming Network has a lot of his material. You can find some of the Bob Brookmeyer stuff with him. Um, there are some big band outings with Clark on there, too. He's just an excellent player, and any trumpet player knows this guy is just a legend. So if you get a chance, check him out. Have some fun. Okay, we'll see you on Wednesday for Classic Rock. Till then, everybody take care, stay safe. Thanks for stopping by.